At any given time, there are hundreds of thousands of cars available at the salvage auction. I've bought a few dozen myself now, but this Range Rover was by far the most spontaneous, with little reason more than a gamble. Did the gamble pay off? Well, I'll let you be the judge. For a car that was picked up completely dead and then immediately finding out its head gasket was blown among a million other issues, we actually got it to run, idle and drive pretty decently using little more than a bottle of sealer and a whole drum of oil. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. It runs abnormally loud, requires you to pull a fuse every time you start it, and maintains its temperature only due to its holy thermostat. The top end of this Rover's BMW V8 engine is likely catastrophically damaged, and I've had a lot of feedback from you that I should just fix it the right way. Either pull the heads or pull the motor, but why? With an odometer reading of over 220,000 miles on this chassis, a replacement engine might increase the value a few hundred bucks. Admittedly, I've had a ton of fun experimenting with cheap fixes on this car, but I have to get back to finishing a few long-standing projects, most namely my Ferrari 360 and Lamborghini Gallardo rebuilds. In a recent post on my Instagram, I offered to trade this Range Rover for literally anything, even items with no monetary value. Whatever trade offer was the most enticing will take my Range Rover home. I was offered some of the most outlandish, but overall very generous items. And I want to tell you all about them in a bit. But first, we've got to clean this thing up, which has been sitting outside for as long as I've had it, and even longer at the salvage auction. Even though this Range Rover is filthy, we are going to detail it in a very time-conscious and budget-friendly manner, using stuff that mainly I had hanging around the house here. A clothing steamer, which most regular generic stores carry. If you don't have one of these, you got to get one of these to detail your car. They're incredible for a variety of things, as I'm about to show you. And uh, you can also pick one up at Amazon. I'll link it down below right here dish soap all the detailing guys are gonna say don't use dish soap this is terrible no it is not and I'm gonna tell you why in a minute it has to do with our ceramic coating right here this is armor shield 9 the best DIY ceramic coating and wait till you see how I put plumbers putty to use again something that is extremely cheap about two bucks at the store we're gonna start off by getting some of the major junk off the car like the auction chalk here something was clearly stuck to the lower door because there's some adhesive remaining and it's really on there as are always these darn auction stickers these are a nightmare to get off in one piece but again our tools are gonna help us out with that so let's get started First time, I saw you hug you all the time it was something in the air the night I'm a huge fan of detailing clay. It's transformed the way I clean cars since the first time I used it when I was a teenager. But any product at the auto parts store that has clay that comes with it or maybe a clay sponge or a clay mitt costs $20 and up. It is fairly expensive for what you're getting, just usually a, a little block of clay. Let me show you a quick Sam Crack hack. Admittedly, I did not invent this trick, but I read about it a long time ago and it works really well. This is plumber's putty and it has the same consistency as clay bar, and guess what? It does the same exact thing. I picked this tub up of 14 ounces for only $2.22 at my local store. You could get it at the hardware store, and let me show you how effective it is. Just look at the side of this car after being ceramic coated. It has that glass-like feel 
which is basically because ceramic coating puts a layer almost like glass over the car. It's very thin, very effective, but unlike a wax finish, ceramic coating lasts for up to a few years. So nothing will stick to the paint. You'll always have that really clean feeling paint after you wash your car and it just looks incredible. Again, look at the gloss, look at the shimmer of the paint in the sun there. And this car, remember, is a 2004 with over 220,000 miles, and this is the original paint. It is super simple to apply ceramic coating and well worth it. Now, ceramic is a really hot material used in a ton of detailing products nowadays, but don't get products with ceramic properties mixed up with a true ceramic coating. Detailers in some cases charge over $1,000 for a true ceramic coating and will tell you it needs professional installation. But in my experience, it's not really all that hard. I've installed Armor Shield 9 coating on a few of my cars. A mid-size sedan took me only about an hour. You wipe the coating on, let it cure, simply wipe it off with a microfiber towel, and the time you spend installing it now is the time you'll save 10 times over down the road when it comes to your generic car cleaning. Now, I called up Avalon King, the makers of this Armor Shield 9. They've partnered with me on on this video and they're offering a $25 discount on your order of ceramic coating if you click the link down in the description box below and use the code down there that means you can get a bottle of this under 50 bucks if you got a larger car like the Range Rover I suggest a couple bottles and they discount it as you add bottles to your order so again the value is incredible and the results even better so be sure to check out my link in the description box now you might have noticed throughout the build this part of the headlight right here which is the turn signal is destroyed cracked up top here missing the lens over it and it just hanging loose so we're gonna go ahead and remove it quite simply with just a couple of harnesses right there and install this beautiful brand new one one two there we go now that the range rover is all cleaned up and coated it's ready for its new owner which is one of you guys i announced in the last video that i'd be giving this away to whoever had the best trade offer and i got quite a few incredible generous offers a lot of stuff on this list i personally believe is monetarily worth way more than the range rover we got over a thousand submissions and i cut that down into a hundred and i've cut that hundred down into about 50 or so that's how many good ones there are there can only be one and i'm going to tell you exactly who that is in a moment but first i wanted to address exactly why i didn't repair the range rover in well what you might call the proper fashion why i didn't pull the heads and redo the head gasket uh, why i didn't just swap the motor and that's because this car with a replacement motor or with replacement heads and a head gasket in my opinion just really wouldn't be worth much more at all there's not a lot of value to an old range rover with over 200,000 miles running or not think about it would you want to use this car for your daily driver now i know i'm selling it really good to whoever's about to own it but that's why i believe it takes a specific individual and again i got a ton of generous offers offers that far exceed the value of the car, but I wanted to make sure it went to a person that saw it for what it is. In my opinion, this Range Rover is a perfect parts car, but somebody could use it for maybe a unique project. Either way, I paid 1400 bucks for this car at auction, and there was someone standing behind me to bid 1300, so it is worth something. And right now, I wanna go through the list of the best trade offers. Again, this was very difficult to pick because there were so many unique things. By no means am I trying to come out on top here with the most expensive trade offer. I just want this Range Rover to go to the most appropriate home, but I want there to be a good story to go along with it. And so I'm gonna rattle through again the best trade offers here, and then we'll announce our winner. Graham offered a Walmart bike with a four-stroke engine and his unicycle. Michael offered a Hofner Beetle bass guitar. DJ CJ, the stick man, he offered a necklace that's huge and it says, damn. This one was easily in my top five. Carlos offered a custom chopper bicycle inspired by Chester Cheetah from the Cheetos brand that was a collaboration between Cheetos and Crayola. They actually gave a few of these bikes away and it came with a crazy story. I guess that a lot of these bikes were damaged in transit from the manufacturer. They are ordered to be destroyed, but a handful of them made them out into the country here. So something that's 
sounds really rare and again, really cool. The Chester Cheetah Chopper bike. How about a Hellcat wheel that somebody won from another YouTuber? This Hellcat wheel was the only one of four to survive a house fire. Alex offered up an original and restored Street Fighter II Champion Edition arcade machine which is a crazy coincidence because I just picked up my very own arcade one-up Mortal Kombat arcade rig. This one is just crazy. Lewis from Motorhead Tech offered up his 2013 Audi A4 project that he's put a ton of time into. Huge thanks, Lewis. Now I had two offers concerning tattoos. Somebody offered to get a picture of me or my name tattooed on their body, and a tattoo artist offered to give me any tattoo of what I want anywhere on my body. Michael offered a singing deer named Buck, Peter offered some cute European chicks. When I say chicks, I mean little chickens. That one was hard to pass up. Axel offered up a 2016 Honda Ruckus with only 2,500 miles. That sounds like it's worth a fortune more than this Range Rover. Ben, with a 97 Ski-Doo Formula 3 triple snowmobile. Doesn't do me very good here in Florida, but thank you very much, Ben. Theo wants to reglaze a bathtub for me. Unfortunately, I don't own a bathtub. Michael was Bill Paxton's stand-in from the movie Twister, and he still has one of the shirts that he wore on the set and offered that up. Nick has an executive edition Volvo with a factory mini fridge. Again, in the top five here, tough to pass up a Tommy Wiseau signed framed photograph. How about a vintage Honda CB125 or a mint Honda Elite 80 from Aiden? Dave wanted to trade me straight up for a Range Rover Sport, but this one was a 118th scale model. This one is really unique. Spencer has a 2002 BMW 325XI. It's got a six-speed manual transmission with a plow and a winch. Someone offered up their 1971 Troy Bell Tiller, which is really coincidental because I have a very similar old Troy Bell. It looks just like this. Jonathan is a fireman, and he wanted to take me for a 24-hour ride in his fire truck. Maria has this really cool Elvis Shelby Cobra figurine. It's in the original box and it sings Elvis tunes. Jonathan has a 99 Daewoo Laganza. Too bad it wasn't a Daewoo Lano, so I might have taken you up on that. Joe has a lamp him and his daughter made. How about a hand-painted Baby Yoda? All right, this one is really funny. Someone offered to trade me a C43 AMG. It's a pretty rare Mercedes, but not just any C43. It's the $200 one from the Legit Street Cars channel. My good friend Alex has done a ton of videos on this car. Car. But the funny part about all this is I'm sitting in his garage right now. That car has been worked on months ago, probably right here. Zach, super generous, a 1984 Porsche 944. Richard is the second owner of this modified airplane tug. Theo with an electric unicycle. It sounds like something I'd like to lend to Rich Rebuilds and have him try it out on maybe a short pier. Uh, Bill with a men's Mobusen watch. I've never ever heard of that make before, but when you search it, these watches cost anywhere between 1,000 and several thousand dollars. So it's definitely worth more than the Range Rover. Tony has an electric slot machine, an anonymous person has a pot belly pig, and Osvaldo has a Christmas cooking glove. And now I wanna play a quick clip sent in to me by a viewer named Jeffrey. Hey Sam, so this is Jeff Adamson. My offer to you, fly that Blackhawk, with that American flag on the dash, in your honor. I'll give you a certificate with your name on it, my name and the other pilot's name. I love your channel and uh, appreciate what you do. Jeffrey, what you do is extremely inspiring and I appreciate it very much. The idea of you flying a flag in my honor, well, I have no clue what I did to deserve that honor, but I greatly appreciate your thoughtfulness. And since Jeffrey was one of our earlier entries, it was hard not to just stop things right there and crown him the winner, but we did go through every single one and picked someone else. Jeffrey, I'm so sorry if I had two Range Rovers, I assure you, you'd be getting one of them right now. Our winner is Eddie out of Pennsylvania. He offered to trade his 2005 LR3 and his 99 Discovery 2, which has a two inch lift kit and a bunch of other modifications for the Range Rover, but he doesn't want it for himself. He wants to take the Range Rover, fix it appropriately, then raffle it off and donate the money to his brother's foundation. Eddie's brother died at a young age with cancer. The charitable element here combined with Eddie's knowledge of Land Rovers just makes so much sense. This is your car, Eddie, and I really hope you enjoy it. And as far as the trade goes, I can't take your two prize Land Rover projects. You keep those and do good with this Range Rover. And I gotta thank Eddie and everybody else 
who entered this contest. Again, the generosity levels were just off the charts here, and I wanna thank you all for that. Now that the Range Rover is done, at least in my hands, it's time to finish up a few long-standing projects. We've got the Lamborghini Gallardo rebuild, which I just saw in person, and it is incredible. I can't wait to share it with you and the Ferrari 360 rebuild, which is very close to completion. We painted a lot of body panels and uh, it's gonna look like brand new when it's done. If you can't wait to see those, be sure to give this video a huge like. Also, I'll be posting a lot of pictures of both of those cars and any new projects, which one might be sitting right next to me on either side on Instagram before anything goes live on YouTube. Just go right here or click the link down in the description box below. And as always, I gotta give a huge thanks to each and every one of you for watching. I'll catch you very soon.